Okay, if you would all take your seats, it's now four o'clock and we're going to begin our proceedings. Um, um, would you call the roll, please? Hello? Mr. Fernandez Guzman? Yes. Gonzalez? Ms. Gutierrez? Mr. Evia? Mr. Evia? Mr. Holland? Mr. Lasarte, Mr. Martinez, Here. Mr. Pago, Here. Mr. Sanabria, yes. Mr. Rodriguez Pina, Here. Mr. Wartman, Here. Vice Chair Fano, Here. Chair Ferre. Uh, here. I saw you. Welcome to all, and um, if you would all stand, and Shelly, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I'm the vice chair, and um, we've already done the roll call. So the declaration um, of voting Thank conflicts. Thank you, Mr. Chair. At this time, if any of the members have a voting conflict with any of the action items on the agenda, would you please note them for the record? None shown, Mr. Chair. All right. Now. <clears throat> The next portion of this is citizens' comments. Um, I know that we have a list here of citizens' comments, which amounts to 20, 20, 20, 20, oh, 23, because, yeah, one person dropped out. So um, Mr. Hank Sanchez Resnick dropped out, but there are 23 other that I've asked to speak. Now, the rules of Miami-Dade County on citizens' comment policy, which was passed by former Chairman Felix Lasarte, who is not here today, um, uh, explains that there's no statutory rights that exist for citizens to participate in public meetings at MDX. However, we did adopt a, um, a policy which is in effect. The policy says that the remarks of each individual invited to address the board are limited to three minutes and one speaker may not cede their time to another in order to extend the three minutes for a single speaker. The aggregate time allotted for public comment on any agenda shall not exceed 15 minutes. Now, um, it also says that the um, chair, um, and I, I will, the chair will follow the order of the speakers as uh, they requested to speak, and they are, uh, let, let me finish and then I'll recognize you immediately. Thank you, sir. Yes, ma'am. Carlos Garcia. Jane Walker, Mitchell Rosenberg, and Sergio Herrera. Now, here's, here's, uh, here's what I'm going to do out of fairness, and I see that the mayor of um, Donald is here. McDougal, I'm sorry. Excuse me, Mayor. Mc you did a good job uh, with Michael Putney, by the way. Uh, mayor McDougal is here, so I will, of course, recognize him. <clears throat> what, I, what I would like to recommend that we do is that we will hear the 15 minutes uh, as our rules say, and then we're going to get into the purpose of today, which is a series of actions. Um, and then I will ask, or if you want to do it now, I will ask uh, to extend the time so that everyone will be able to speak. But I would like to do that at the end of the action agenda. In other words, I will recognize five speakers and the mayor to speak before, 
and they can sum up the thrust of the discussion. Um, then uh, I will recognize the rest of you, as it is noted on the list, to speak your three minutes, uh, but that will have to be after we conclude our um, regular agenda uh, and before the chairman's comments. Now, to do that, uh, I, that, that will require an action by the board, which requires a two-thirds vote. First, you require Under a our motion. Rules. What? I would like to make a motion okay. at the appropriate time. Okay. I, the chair now recognizes uh, you, Shelley. Thank you, sir. I would make, like to make a motion to extend the public comment to the time allotted by the chair, as he said, for the amount of people, three minutes per person, to follow after all the action items, which would be on the agenda of today, April 30th, board meeting, which I believe would be 8E. Yes, ma'am. Second. There's been a motion and a second. Is there further discussion? And your motion, as I understand it, is that all of the speakers will follow 8E. Is that correct? Yes. After the, you wanted to address the first five now, I'm saying the remaining. Okay. I, I stand corrected. So the motion is that we will hear Mayor McDougal, and I will recognize five people for three minutes apiece. And then after that, after 8E, we will hear the rest, whoever wants to speak, that's on the list. Yes, sir. That is my motion. Is that, is that understood? Is there further discussion on this motion? The, yes. I'd just like to put on the record, I obviously have no objection to hearing from the public on this, but I have to leave this meeting a little bit early today, so I don't want anyone to leave that I'm going to be leaving in the middle of their meeting, but I have to leave by 5 today. At 5.30? 5 o'clock. At 5 o'clock. Yes. All right. Well, then I'll tell you, in, in your interest, I would recommend that we hear all of these speakers later, but I'll do whatever you want. That that's because then you wouldn't hear them any of them. I have no problem hearing hear the first. If he, had, if he has to leave, all right. Well, then you want. Well, that's up to you. No, no. I just don't want. I don't want the other speakers. I have no problem putting that on the record. I have no problem with that at all. So the motion stands as as it was made and seconded. Is there further discussion? All right. All those in favor of the motion. Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right. So the motion passed, and therefore um, we will. Um, uh, proceed in that way. Now, I would like to request, out of courtesy uh, to Mr. Sanabria, but more important to uh, Gene Prescott, um, I see Mr. Verheerly, who just walked in, and is Mr. La Casa here? Is Mr. Prescott here? Ah, okay. Out of, out of uh, courtesy to Mr. Prescott and to George Verheerly, I would like to take this matter out of, uh, out of order, but to do that, I need a motion that that um, item, would you tell me what item it is? 8A, 8A. That item 8A be t taken out of order. So moved. All right, so it's been moved and seconded for the discussion. All those in favor Aye. of that change? Aye. Aye, opposed? So it passes, all right? I pass the gavel to- Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and it's with- a great point of personal privilege to be in a unique group of people who have contributed so much to NDX. And, and we have the three past treasurers um, here today to receive a commendation and recognition to all the hard work that has led us to where we are today. I would be remiss if I don't mention the first original treasurer of this authority who was George Berlin, and George Berlin started with the inception of the authority, and he laid the groundwork and the guidance for all of us to follow. So in that regard, we have a resolution that reads as follows. Whereas the Miami-Dade County Expressway Authority is a body and corporate political instrument and an agency of the state established by Ordinance uh, 94215, adopted on December of 1994, as amended by further ordinances, whereas the authority elects from among its members individuals who serve as authority threshers, and whereas Gene Prescott serve as a member of MDX Board of Directors from July 1st, 1998 until June 29, 2007, whereas former State Representative Carlo Casa 
serve as a board director from October 2005 until March of 2010. And whereas Jorge Vigil served as member of the ex-board directors and treasurer from May of 2006 to December of 2011. Whereas the forehand past treasurers have served the Miami-Dade County Expressway Authority with distinction and merit recognition for the service, now therefore be it resolved by Miami-Dade Expressway Authority that we are recognized in these past MDX treasurers as outstanding contributors to the MDX policies, guidance, and accomplishments. And I'm just reading shorthand because I don't want to read the whole thing. It's, but essentially, if all three gentlemen will come up to the front and we can give them their um, pigskin certificate of recognition, and I would like to have a round of applause for people that have done so much for the authority and stuff. As for, uh, for a photograph, I appreciate that too. Thank you. Any comments? Mr. Prescott. The pleasure it is to see what you've all done since I've left the board and uh, achieving many improvements on the mobility. I, as you were mentioning, I stayed a long time and saw a lot of things happen, but I see you've continued to progress. And I applaud your efforts and uh, keep up the good work. Thank you. And thanks for this uh, plaque that you're giving us. Thank you all for this commendation. It's an honor. Um, I continue to see that you're continuing the good work that I was fortunate to be a part of for six years from 06 to 2011. Uh, and I think there are great things ahead for this authority if we stay the course and, uh, and continue thinking about the public's interest and what's best for the long-term future of Miami-Dade County. Thank you. Would you join me for a photograph, please, with the president? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, sure. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's back to you. The, the mayor of Cutler Bay, uh, Mayor McDougall. All right, what did you say? Uh, we need a motion to adopt motion the, resolution, the resolution, Mr. Chairman. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, there was a motion made by Mr. Sanabria, seconded by Mr. Wartman, uh, to recognize our three past treasurers. Further discussion on the motion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Thank you. We, uh, Maria Luisa we sent a copy. The chair recognizes you. And as I said before, you did a good job with, with Michael Putney. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Appreciate, I really appreciate your kind words. You're uh, not running for something, are you? I beg your pardon? You're not running for your office, are you? Actually, I am running for oh, office. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> Has nothing to do with this issue, but uh, yeah, as of uh, last January. But uh, as the mayor of Cutler Bay, this issue that I'm going to bring before you, I'll keep very short, and to Mr. Chair and to your committee. I, the last meeting that I attended, I had understood that this item that was passed at your last regular meeting uh, would be reconsidered. Uh, and I think the chair had mentioned that because the vote was 7-6, that it was something that should be further discussed, if I recall correctly. 
Uh, under, under the rules, and I'll leave, these to, leave this to the attorneys, uh, I, I believe that time may have passed for reconsideration. Uh, I don't know if it's a reconsideration or a rescind. I don't know. Um, I, I just don't know, but I know that it did come from the chair that this would be uh, possibly discussed at a later time, which I'm hopeful may happen uh, today. My point in that is that simply not to repeat everything that I said at the last meeting, because each of you were present and um, tolerated my, uh, my couple of moments, is that I do personally feel that what we are doing is raising these tolls to an exorbitant amount, and we should take a little bit more time, a little bit more thoughtfulness <clears throat> in how we set this up. I'm hopeful that this committee will take the time to examine this a little bit closer and not turn Miami-Dade County into a area of just highways, roads, concrete, and asphalt and to have a vision for the future for some sort of either light rail, mass transit, or put some monies aside so we can accomplish that mission as well. I think that we need a vision for the future, not just of automobiles and concrete and higher tolls, because it will never stop. It hasn't stopped in the 50 years I've been here, uh, and, and I'm hopeful that uh, this committee will have a vision to try and at least give that further consideration. With that said, I will um, call the day, and thank you, Mr. Chair, very much for the time you gave me. Thank you, Mayor McDougal. Uh, ju just for the record, uh, before I call the next speaker, um, I, I want to read exactly what the mayor was referring to so that we're all clear what the, these are the precise words that were used in that discussion. As chair, I said, I would request that we give the administration an opportunity to react and give us hard numbers. Uh, Gonzalo Sanabria, Member Sanabria said, if you like to relegate this to the B and F, which is the budget and finance analysis, and come back to you, Mr. Chairman, with the exact numbers. To that I said, I think this is a perfectly reasonable request for Javier to work with the budget and finance committee and then come back through budget and finance with a recommendation as to now, as of now, we have a motion that has passed seven to six. J.R. Ah, uh, Javier Rodriguez. J.R. Mr. Chairman, I need to clarify the direction. The motion on the floor that carried seven to six was was the seventy cents. That was a question. There was, it was the motion that carried on the floor seven to, seven to six the seventy cents. I answered, it is resolution number 13-05, approval of proposed open road tolling rates for SR-112 and SR-836, endorsed by the Budget and Finance Committees on March the, January, March the 7th of 13, that is what passed. So Mr. Rodriguez says, so the analysis you would like from us is the fiscal impact of the proposed option. So the analysis, I repeat, so the analysis you would like from us is the fiscal impact of the proposed option. So here's the, here's the final word that uh, Carlos Fernandez Guzman uh, stated. No matter what action it takes, the action that we have decided as a board is to increase these tolls. The fairness of it is of it is as to the amount. So let's analyze what the impact would be on the current work plan and what projects can be delayed or eliminated, but in an orderly fashion, as all the committees that, partic that, that participated and in, in an environment that allows for the analysis to be completed uh, before we take a decision. So uh, that is the context of what we're talking about at this time, Mr. Mayor. So now the next speaker is Carlos Garcia. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I just want to make a, before we introduce the next speaker, that we did receive a letter from the mayor out of, out of protocol. I want to recognize we have a letter from uh, Mayor Cindy Lerner here for the record, and just wanted to make sure that we uh, recognize her letter. Let, let, let the record reflect that a letter has been received from Mayor Cindy Lerner that was sent to all members of the, of the board, and uh, it will be put into the record. 
Uh, next speaker is Carlos Garcia, Mr. Garcia. <coughs> You have three minutes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Ferre, and thank you for the opportunity. Carlos Garcia with the uh, local grassroots group RollbackTolls.com. Uh, <clears throat> I'm uh, passing out before you is a diagram um, of an option that uh, hasn't been discussed yet. Um, what we're proposing is an idea. I know that you passed in a, a, a resolution of 70 cents per mainline gantry. If, we don't, if you don't increase the toll rate and you keep it at the present rate from the turnpike to I-95 at $2.50 round trip, breaking that $2.50 up between the six proposed ORT gantries would equal roughly 42 cents per mainline gantry. Um, that would, in effect, let you do the ORT, the open road tolling, that's gonna allow you to capture a lot more tolls you're gonna capture the tolls that, from the 45% of the people that are not paying today to use the system. Um, and it's, it's, it's not increasing the per mile rate as was uh, approved um, on March 19th. What we're, what we're uh, offering is to look at this. this. This option here of the 42 cents per mainline gantry is gonna yield a lot of revenue. You, you did it on, on the Don Shula, on the, on the uh, Don Shula on 874 in Kendall. You put ORT in, and you did not raise the per mile rate. And from what I've seen, because I take that road all the time, is it allowed you to do a lot of improvements. You had a lot of bondable uh, monies that uh, the ORT generated, and you're, you widened it, and you're now finishing the last leg of it between Kendall Drive and Bird Road. We're asking you to basically look at this option, and, and this seems like a reasonable reasonable option to a lot of people that we presented this to. And um, what we're asking is that, you know, I know that some of you heard the community on the 19th. The community is still hurting. The community still doesn't have jobs. The community is losing their houses. The community right now possibly is being asked to help fund this dolphin's roof. The community is possibly being asked for a 1% sales tax increase to, to, to help build infrastructure and fix the infrastructure. Everybody wants to lean on the community right now. And, and you know, and, and this is, it's, it's overly aggressive. We're asking for, for some reason. And, and, I, and I, want to, I want to thank Maritza Gutierrez. I, I, what she said in the Budget Finance Committee meeting made a lot of sense. The ORT component alone, when you knock down those cash collection plazas, is going to allow for an, a significant increase in throughput. The project that's being worked on, 836, 826, that's already been funded, uh, when that's finished, that's going to increase throughput tremendously. Let's let those play out. Extend your work program. You know, don't increase, find out what this will allow you to, to, to uh, realize in, in revenue, and then later look at possible, you know, rate adjustments. But right now, the community is, is hurting. It's too fragile. The economy is too fragile at this moment. And I think that uh, this would also help to possibly include more people to ride on the highway, where the 70 cents per option at, main, at each mainline gantry would discourage a lot of people from getting on the highway. And that's what a, our group has been, has been hearing about. If there's one option that, that, that would be considered, because we know RT is a fact of life. I understand that that's coming. You know, it's a fact. We're not saying don't do RT, do our ORT, but make it at the at the fairer rate, or find a way to distribute the cost of the of the present cost today. Thank you very much for your time and consideration. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Jane Walker. Uh, thank you very much, Jane Walker, 105th Terrace and Kendall, 33186. Thank you for the opportunity to speak today and for your service to the community as volunteers. Um, if MDX builds and manages roads that the public cannot afford to travel upon, then MDX will have failed its mission, just as surely as, as if NASA sent a rocket into space and they couldn't do the experiments or the astronauts died in, the, in terms of the mission. So I would say that this is an overarching issue that I would like for you always to keep in the forefront of your mind. I'm asking the board members to make a motion to rescind a vote of the 54% toll increase 
on 836 or to otherwise openly explore options with your parliamentarian today under Robert's rules for mitigating actions taken or not taken in the March 19th meeting and public hearing for the following reasons. Statements made in the public hearing by the chairman confuse the public. And um, the transcript that you wrote was tru truncated. You did also make a statement that you wanted a continuous of the public hearing, but you did not read that today. It was confusing. Furthermore, Chairman, you made statements on the Jim DeFiti show and on Spanish television to thousands and thousands of individuals. A point of order was not raised by any board member, but more importantly, we don't expect for you all to be experts with parliamentarian procedure. But the parliamentarian chose to remain silent during an extensive conversation about this at the end of the meeting. A letter of April 5th was written containing a legal opinion from Pam Leslie to the board and was given 17 days after this hearing. This letter was not posted on the MDX website, to my knowledge, for another 29 days after its authorship. In fact, I called and spoke with Ms. Leslie, and she correctly pointed out to me that she does not work for me and would not answer my legal questions, and I understand this. She also said she had no time for me and I should ask a parliamentarian, and then one hour later posted the letter very quietly to the website. Quite frankly, I'm appalled. The public records requests have not been fully complied with. I put in public records requests, and one of the memos that I got references a, a memo to the board that you all received. I don't know who wrote it, who received it, what's contained in it. I don't know if it influenced you indirectly or, indir or directly in any way. I don't know if it's a violation of Sunshine Law, and I'm assuming that it's not. I'm assuming that it's appropriate. By the same token, I'm putting in public records requests, and I'm not getting everything I'm asking for. Agendas are not posted to the website until after the seven-day rule, so therefore we don't have an opportunity to review them or to petition government. As board members, you may or may not be aware of how we experience this communication as the public, but this to me is obstructionist. And so therefore I'm giving you the benefit of knowing this, knowing that I come here with my community uh, best interests and that I want to see MDX succeed and do great things in this community. I acknowledge that you do many things well. I thank Mr. Rodriguez for presenting that 60 cent option so that it could be discussed and I encourage you to consider that government does not always know what's best for the public. I have faith that some of you agree with me there. Time. So therefore I ask for your attention to these matters of communications de deficiencies and also to find a way, by talking about this today with a parliamentarian, how you can unring the bell, discuss it some more, and put forth better public policy that serves your community. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Ms. Walker. The next speaker will be Michael Rosenberg. Hi, I'm uh, Michael Rosenberg, 13030, North Calusa Club Drive, Miami, Florida. Uh, besides being a, a community activist, I'm president of the Kendall Federation of Homeowner Associations. The KFHA is a service organization that responds to requests and the needs of the Kendall community, population of about 400,000 people. The board members of the Kendall Federation, along with myself, have received numerous calls about MDX and the impact of the tolls on their personal finances during the past two years. Those calls have jumped dramatically in the past few months with the community desperately seeking our help about these forthcoming increased tolls because they feel there's no place to turn to. You're certainly not going to help them. They've come to us. Last night I had a dream. I suppose it was because I knew I was coming here to speak today. I walked out of my house, got in the car, backed out of the driveway and heard a beep. In shock, I looked up. There was a toll gantry in my driveway. <laughs> I looked up and down the street. Good. Every driveway had a gantry. I realized that our nightmare is your dream. <laughs> Gantries everywhere in every imaginable place with the sounds of those silent beeps 
never ending as continuous charges hit our credit cards. In 1994, with the best of intentions, MDX was formed under the marketing idea of we don't get to keep enough of our tax dollars in Dade County, so let's create MDX and keep that money here. Good idea, right? However, I don't believe that anyone in 1994 realized that in 2013, people would be paying $600 to $800 a year to drive to work. And the MDX would say, we need more. And more. And more. The KFA, KFHA would like you to reconsider your recent vote and to rescind the toll rate increases. The 1994 plan was to keep money here for road improvements and not to continue to find ways to reach into our pockets, to endlessly look for ways to take more. That was not the intention. Sometimes the community is a sleeping giant. Once they fully realize the impact of what you're doing, it could become your undoing. You really need to think about what's going to happen and what you're planning as people organize for financial survival to understand it could cost them $1,000 a year to drive to work. There's no question you've done great work and you've built safe roads, but you need to do it within the limits of what we can afford and not what you want to spend. The KFHA urges you to vote again and to not raise these tolls on behalf of our community that's already paying too much as it is for these MDX roads. In 1994, we said, Hi, let's Rosenberg. keep the money here, not for MDX to take it all. Thank you very much. Thank you. Th thank you, Mr. Rosenberg. The next speaker will be Sergio Herrera. Mr. Herrera, are you here? Is Mr. Sergio Herrera here? The next speaker will be Martha Pearson. Is Martha Pearson here? Martha Pearson. The next speaker will be Manny Sarmiento. Is Mr. Sarmiento here? Sarmiento. Is Mr. Manny Sarmiento here? The next speaker will be Carmen Lopez of the Doral Chamber of Commerce. Is Ms. Lopez here? Ms. Lopez. Carmen Lopez. The next speaker will be Gilbert Rodriguez. Is Mr. Rodriguez here? Gilbert Rodriguez. Is Mr. Rodriguez here? The next speaker will be Jesus Perez. Is Mr. Perez here? Jesus Perez. The next speaker will be Margarita Sanchez. Is Margarita Sanchez here? The next speaker will be Domingo Pacheco. Is Mr. Pacheco here? Mr. Pacheco. Is Mr. Pacheco here? The next speaker will be Jose Maya. Is Mr. Maya here? Is Mr. Maya here? The next speaker, speaker will be Felipe Vidal, Kendall resident. Is Mr. Vidal here? Mr. Vidal. The next speaker will be Pat Malone, M-I-L-O-N-E. Ms. Malone. Good afternoon. I've been to several meetings lately. Um, a lot of different issues. They all have one thing in common, finding a balance. The anger that I witnessed from a lot of protesters, individuals and groups, is a reaction to unacceptable extremes. I'm using some of my vacation hours to be here today to oppose two MDX extremes. The toll increase is an unacceptable extreme. 50% is very extreme. A seven to six vote tells me about half your members are not comfortable with that extreme. I asked the board to reconsider the vote and reconsider the rate. The second thing I'm here for is a plan to extend State Road 836 West. That's also an extreme. I know it's on the horizon, but I'm here from the Redland and I'm representing my farm community. It would encourage development near agricultural land, on agricultural land, obliterating agricultural land. As gas prices rise, there is increasing value in local food production. There is also growing potential for the Redland raised branding that we've accomplished out there, I think with the, um, the county's help. And agritourism, that's very underdeveloped, agritourism. There's an ag tour, I think some of you may have even been on it. Uh, that should be even more developed. Expanding the 836 would undermine the only boundary protecting the farm community, the urban development boundary. 
I'm asking you to remove the 836 expansion plan from your agenda. We need a better balance in Miami-Dade County. Um, if the tolls go up to the degree that you're anticipating, that you're promoting, um, I'm going to be, a new nickname is, is going to be the Artful Dodger. I came here, took me about an hour from Sunset and, two, and 102 where I work. I commute from the Redland, it takes me an hour. But it's a nice drive on the Chrome. Um, I managed to come through Coral Gables, beautiful drive, so I will not be able to afford the expressways if you raise the tolls. Thank you. All right, thank you, thank you, Ms. Malone. The next speaker will be Mr. Daniel Gonzalez. Mr. Daniel Gonzalez here. What? No, I have four. I, because Mr. Sergio Herrera was not here. Uh, Hank Sanchez was not here. I've had four. Uh, I didn't count the mayor's one. Uh, Daniel Gonzalez, is he here? Mr. Daniel Gonzalez is not here. Mr. Rene Santiago, is Mr. Rene Santiago here? Rene Santiago, Mr. Santiago is not here. Angel Aguilar, is Mr. Aguilar here? Angel Aguilar is not here. Kent Crook, is Mr. Kent Crook here? Is Mr. Kent Crook here? He is not. Mario Asiriba. As Mario Asiriva, A-C-I-R-I-V-A. -I -I Mario Asiriva, he's not here. Tony Cueto, is Mr. Tony Cueto here? Tony Cueto, is Mr. Cueto here? The next speaker will be Gregory Beck. Is Mr. Gregory Beck here? Gregory Beck. Nope. The next speaker will be Miller Myers. Is Mr. Chair. Miller Myers? Mr. Myers, the chair recognizes you. Miller Myers of West Kendall and proud co-chair of RollbackTolls.com. We're here today hopefully revisiting the toll rate increase proposed for the 836. Should it go from 11 cents per mile to 16 or 17 cents a mile? 47 percent increase or 54 percent increase? Should MDX throw us a crumb or tell us to go eat cake? We would argue that closing the system, putting up 17 new gantries, and capturing 45% of the drivers you've never captured before should be sufficient. Dianu, it would have been sufficient. We were given a civics lesson last month by the chairman, who again today will get the last word. Two points of clarification, Mr. Chairman. As to this board reflecting a representative democracy, we respectfully disagree. Our founding fathers did indeed set up a representative government. I elect people to represent me and us, if I don't like the job they're doing, I can vote them out. This board is not that. This is an appointed board, appointed by people in office. So the people I did or did not vote for appointed you. You do not represent me. You represent those who appointed you. And you represent the bondholders who currently have a debt, you currently have a debt with them approaching $3 billion. And you represent the vendors who come in here in suits selling you $8,000 piece trees. This is not representative democracy. This is not representative government. Jefferson, Madison, and Franklin would be rolling in their graves at the power this appointed, non-accountable board enjoys. The rest of the civics lesson was that MDX was created by the legislature in far away Tallahassee in 1996. It was not. MDX was created by Ordinance 94-215 in December 1994 by the Miami-Dade Commission. And part of the responsibility that MDX was given was to finance public transportation, i.e. transit. Read it. Unfortunately, this board represents tollation, tolling without representation. MDX indeed inhibits the formation of a public transportation system here in Miami-Dade County. Dianu, MDX, it would have been sufficient. All right, thank you, Mr. Meyer. The, actually, we only have one speaker left, and if it's all right with the rest of the board for three minutes, let's hear from uh, Vittery, Jackie v Vietri, V-I-E-T-R-I. Is she here? Is Jackie Vietri here? Now, that is the last speaker that I have on the list. So um, we have now concluded the uh, the. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if there's anybody else that wishes to speak, <coughs> I, 
I would like to concede a uh, couple minutes to whoever else is not. All right, Mr. Cody, please step forward. The chair recognizes. Would you would you let her speak first? Sure. Yeah, let her. And uh, Steve, I'll leave you. Uh, Mariano, why don't you come up and I'll let you. Go ahead. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair and the rest of the commission. My going there. My name is Moraima Lugo Morales. Address you said? Yes. 4240 Southwest 153rd Place, Miami, Florida, 33185. I am concerned about the increase on these tolls because not the people who drive them casually or whenever they would like to have a day ride, but those people who have to ride to and from work. The increase that you're proposing, that you already said that you had, that it was a done deal, doesn't take into consideration those people who have no jobs, or the jobs are scarce, or they have part-time jobs, and they have to take to and from work. I come from West Kendall also. It takes me over an hour to come down here. If I did not take the expressway, which luckily in an afternoon like this is not so crowded. Now when we're going back home, it's gonna be very crowded. And I'm thinking about the issue about the increases that all the government are squeezing us, the consumer and the citizens, not only of West Dade or West Kendall or Miami Dade, but the whole country that we're being squeezed to the max to pay for those who do not pay because there are always loopholes of people who do not, do not pay their share of the tolls and they get away with it. So I do thank you for the opportunity, giving me the opportunity I was gonna ask for those people who are not here that I don't know if you sign up, why are you not here? I'm here and I didn't sign up, but I thank you again yes. for the opportunity. Right, Have a nice you. afternoon. Thank Please you. reconsider. Thank, thank you, you. ma'am. Uh, Mr. Cruz, sure. your name and address for the record. Mariano Cruz, 1227 Northwest 26th Street, Miami, Florida, 33142-7630. Make sure I got the nine digit zip code. That's better, no? So I work for the post office, too. Uh, and I'm still working for the post office, okay, on OMC, on OWCP. They pay me more than retirement. Uh, one thing I got to say, compare. I don't pay city taxes now, or county taxes, because I am service collector disability. I got all that. But I used to pay uh, property in Kendall. I sold it. That's it. Was Kendall. I have property in City of Miami Lakes. I quickly did it to, to my daughter. But also, it bothers me to hear so many talks. I used to have property in Paul County. You now in Paul County, yeah. The best roads in the state are there. Four lane road. I used to have a property right there, Highway 60, and I work for Tampa, Highway 60. Four lane, no tolls there. I went to Orlando, whatever, Highway 27, Interstate 4, no tolls. All over, the, it, over there, there, Paul County is the center, the hub for transportation in the whole county. They don't have a single toll there. You go to Tampa, yeah, the base, you, you go to the base, the coastway, yeah. But here, when I came here, I used to take 112 right there. In my neighborhood, it would be an entrance right there. Not all there, the I-95, not all. Those roads were built with federal money. And now, I pay taxes in federal money, because I pay a lot in federal capital gains, a deferred comp, the whole thing. I still pay in federal tax money. And my tax, I researched, I had to pay a toll on top of a tax too. And that shouldn't be, because what they've been created, a big bureaucracy, and that's what's being created here, consultant jobs, big salaries. No, no. Go outside and see how the, a lot of the people, they are PA, live, okay? Uh, I resign to pay taxes, and I am not scared or not play. Remember, I was supposed to be killed in 17. I'm a veteran of Cuban, a veteran of civil disability. The anticipation of death is worse than death itself. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Cruz. All right, Mr. Cody, you're the last speaker. You've got three minutes. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, I moved down here in 1959 with my family uh, from Boston before the accident had a chance to take hold. But one of my earliest memories was going through the toll booth by the Orange Bowl as a kid and flipping the dime into the collection basket. And the idea and the promise back then was, this is a toll that's being collected to pay off the bonds that were put on the road. And after that, it would become a freeway. A freeway being the idea that you could travel it for free. Well. We changed that toll from 10 cents each way to 25 cents going into downtown. Evidently, getting out of downtown was something you could do for free. Well, over time, we have found that these tolls are just too lucrative. We're hanging on to them. And now I know that you've got a, a tough job. We're a growing community. But I would really encourage you all to step back and uh, for, for one of the board members to make a motion to rescind You've heard the outcry from the community. Uh, a motion to rescind would be the appropriate uh, parliamentary vehicle. And uh, the chairman was on the Jim DeFiti show and other programs and said the board should reconsider. He'd like it to be uh, a larger majority in favor of increasing the tolls. I think that there should be a rescission and a reexamination of the issues. And if the vote goes the other way, um, in the Budget and Finance Committee, there were some uh, uh, projects that perhaps wouldn't be taken care of immediately, but as uh, Ms. Gutierrez said, we can't get everything we need all at once. When you're a teenager, you really want that. You want everything to happen at once. But time is, is something that keeps everything from happening at once. And if we take a little bit more time, see how uh, the adjustments to the tolls, perhaps at the lower rate, would work, that may actually, uh, it, it's, it's a an idea that one party especially espouses that if you lower rate, you get more income. And I think that raising the rates too much will encourage people to go off into the side streets and may actually self-defeat the purpose and goal that this board seeks to achieve. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Cody. Uh, the uh, public uh, uh, citizen's comment section 1D is now concluded. Uh, I would like to have ask the, the, uh, for a motion to take uh, out of turn item um, 8, B, C, and D so that we can get uh, Mr. Martinez's vote if possible on this matter. I'll make that motion. Is there a second to the motion? All right, is there further discussion on accelerating 8, B, C, and D? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. We're now on item 8 to B, which is the MDX Traffic Management Center co-location memorandum of understanding. Mr. Chair, I mean, Mr. Director. See, I make mistakes, too. <laughs> Pam, you want to read it in? Uh, certainly. Mr. Chair, item uh, 8B. Uh, this is a matter that was endorsed by the Operations Committee on April 8, 2013. It is uh, to extend the co-location of the Traffic Management Center with Florida DOT. Uh, this is a uh, $77,771.95 issue, and it's to approve the uh, MOU with the Department of Transportation. Mr. Chair, we, this was thoroughly discussed at Operations Committee, but to reiterate, we are co-located at the Sun Guide Center with the Florida Department of Transportation and other regulatory agencies that control traffic flow. And that was the most economic, most efficient option for us to be co-located there. And I want to thank the department for working with us and extending this, uh, this uh, MOU. All right. Is this an approval with, an am with Amendment 1, or is that separate? No. This is a motion to approve Amendment 1. To, I'm approving Amendment 1. All right. Is there a motion to that effect? I'll move it. Second. I will move it. It's been moved and seconded. Is there further discussion on item 8B? All those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. We're now on item C, acceptance of executive director's performance evaluation. Uh, Board members, uh, this, the executive director's performance evaluation was taken up by the executive committee on April 22nd, and it has now been endorsed, endorsed to the board. And uh, I believe that uh, board member Gutierrez, I think, wanted to address it. Yeah. You're thank recognized, you. Ms. Gutierrez. Uh, yes, thank you. I'm sorry that our technology is so poor that sometimes you can't hear when members are calling in and members can't really hear 
every other word that's actually occurring. Um, during that discussion at the executive committee, I pointed out the importance of his current contract and how we address his future contract and the analysis that we've all decided that we need to do. I, I think the two things should be divided. They are separate from each other, his current contract, and if he receives 100% in the evaluation, he should be given a merit increase. We demand and expect professionalism. He gives us that and beyond. He is 24 seven, and when you call, you get a response. To demand from an individual to always expect more, you need to pay. And it is not proper what it is we're doing, and, and really where I'm going with this is a motion to amend what we have before us, because we need to separate the two. How we analyze his contract, and whether or not it should be more money should be a separate item. How we give him a merit increase today is an action that we should also take because he has Excel. In every point that he is evaluated, he has Excel. Now, how to keep him here is you pay. You pay to keep him here. You pay to keep him satisfied. He's not asking for an increase. I think we owe him an increase. Everything is more expensive. We owe him an increase because he is the main gatekeeper. When we leave here today, the one that stays here 24 seven is he. He is the representative of MDX. He is our watchdog. And if we continue to demand, and we will, and believe me, we are not 13 members. We are multiplied, some of us are multiplied by 10, some of us are only multiplied by two, but anyway, the point that I'm getting is we really should give him a raise, not be deferring the situation for a later date. Today is the perfect day. And at that, I, I believe that a two to 3% should be what should be given. Mm, um, are you making a motion to that effect? Well, hold on, hold on. Wait a second. Take. I believe Ms. Gutierrez has made a motion. Uh, I, I cannot accept that motion because we have a committee, uh, and uh, I think you you chair the committee. Yes, sir. And the committee took a position, didn't it, uh, Madam? Yes, it did. And tell me what that position was. Um, the uh, well, um, the vice chair chaired that committee. If she'd like to um, report on what they said, I think that might be more appropriate for her to address mm -hmm. that. I believe that a member of the committee had made a motion to hire a professional to make an evaluation. Mr. Mr. Jose Evia. Mr. Jose Evia made a motion to hire a um, specialist on analyzing salaries, and he asked for it to be uh, with a cap of $5,000. And that motion passed? That motion did pass. Did it pass unanimously? I don't remember. I believe it. Mr. I Mr. Believe Chair, it. if I may. Uh, was, well, hold on. The secretary, were you, yes, it, did. it passed unanimously. Is Ms. that correct? Because you're on the phone. I was on the phone, and I am the one that suggested that analyzing his salary, I'm actually the one that, that thought of the concept, analyzing his salary in the new contract should be done by a third party individual, right. not by our own staff, not by any one of us, that it should be someone extended from us. So it comes unbiased. Yeah. Now, that's a separate and aside situation to what I'm saying today. I still make the argument and because I was on the phone, and I couldn't articulate because I knew that you couldn't hear me properly. I still think we're, we're discussing two separate things. And the vice chair is here, and it is her committee. And who's to say that we cannot amend a motion? And who's to say okay. that we cannot change a decision that was already made I'm, I'm, to I'm, I'm not the betterment other, I'm, of this I'm, authority? I'm not saying otherwise, but I am saying that we do have a motion this is the same problem we had last at the last meeting. This, there is a motion from a committee, and the motion was no. passed unanimously. To make an analysis. 
No, the, the, the motion was to reject the 3% increase and to, in turn, send it to a third party member to analyze and the HR director said $1,000 and Mr. Avia came back and he said, that's absurd. It, we, we, I, I do this on a daily basis. We should not be giving an arbitrary 3% uh, uh, this way. It has to be done in a, in a in a professional way, the only way to do it professionally is to have an outside source, and and that that was the motion that was passed. If now, I uh, please please tell me, uh, I stand corrected. When I may, Mr. Speak, Chairman, sir. when 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 I when you have a chance, I'd like to speak on it, please, sir. And Mr. Chair, if, if you're looking for some guidance, uh, you do have a matter endorsed from a committee, but any member of of the board can make an alternative motion. Any, no. uh, I. You know, well, I guess at well, this point, well, if you ask for a motion to accept the committee's endorsement, you would need to have that motion in a second. All right, but but I I, I just want to make sure that I'm following you know apples and apples. Yes, sir. Because the last time we had this discussion, you you know I was told that I had to take the, as I understood it, that we had to take the committee motion first. Uh, Mr. The, Chairman, if I may for a minute. No, 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 no. Just let her answer, and then I'll recognize you if you want to. Say something um, different. At, at the beginning of, of the last committee uh, board meeting, uh, you did announce that for that particular board meeting that you were going to take what came out of the committee. You're, I stand corrected. Yes. Thank you. All right, Mr. Zanotti. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I, I propose at the executive committee meeting a 3% increase, and, and I overheard in bits and pieces Ms. Gutierrez also endorsing it. That did not prevail, but it wasn't like an overwhelming vote against it, as I remember. But I just, just, just to tell you how somewhat illogical this is, where a 3% increase to Mr. Rodriguez's salary is possibly $7,500, but then the, the, uh, board the, the committee adopted to spend 5000 to find out what to give him, so it doesn't make sense that we're doing that. I think I think it's a counterproductive motion, that, and I, you know, I voted for it to keep unanimity. But you quite frankly, the, quite frankly, committee. quite frankly, if Ms. Gutierrez wants to make a motion for three percent, I would be happy to second that, sir, for <clears> consideration. <throat> now, so. now let me ask you before I, I will accept her motion in a moment. But let me ask you, since uh, you have the floor, uh, Mr. Sanabria, you were at that meeting. You didn't say a word at that at that point, and you voted with this. No, sir, so, I did. I, no, no, I sure did. I sure did speak about the three percent. Okay. I sure made a motion. Are, I, are I mean, you I, are you th are you then in favor of unraveling what was done at the? Uh, at I the am meeting? absolutely in favor of uh, <laughs> when when you're spending five thousand to find out we should pay somebody versus seventy five hundred for somebody who's doing a, an incredible job. Uh, it doesn't make any sense to me, and it, I think it creates uh, an atmosphere of. A storm, sort of like it's not, it's not a positive atmosphere, and I and I reject that. So, if you want to make a motion, I'd be happy to second it. I have made the motion, made the motion to give him an increase of three percent. Well, I, I, I second that motion. This is a motion per contract. Per contract, the contract allows it. This is a motion to to uh, give the executive director a three percent yes, increase sir. per the contract. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Yes. All right. Um, is there any further discussion? Okay. Uh, call the roll on this. Mr. Fernandez Guzman? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Gonzalez? Yes. Ms. Gutierrez? Yes. Mr. Holland? Mr. Martinez? Yes. Mr. Pago? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez Pina? Yes. Mr. Sanabria? Yes. Mr. Wartman? Yes. Vice Chair Fano? Yes. <coughs> Chair Ferre? On a matter of principle, I vote no because I think we discussed this in the, in the, in the committee and I would now pass the gavel, and we don't have a gavel here, but I pass the gavel to the Vice Chair and would like to be recognized for the purposes of a motion. 
Right. So, but the oh, motion, let's say the motion has passed. The position of this motion, the motion Madam Council. The, the, the motion is that we follow. We already did it. We voted passed. on it, sir. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. It yes, has, not, has nothing to do with that. But I vote. I no, voted but no. But, sir, we were in the middle of doing a voting of a motion, I, and it passed. Now, if you uh, want to. Mr. Chair, if we could maybe have the executive secretary read what the, the results of the vote were, and then you. you can move on. The motion passes 9 to 2. My motion is in a continuum. You're coming in with another motion, well, Yes, sir. ma'am, of course. That's nothing oh, to do with this. Clarifying. I want to be Thank sure you. I understand. Thank you very much. The motion is that we follow the unanimous motion of the <clears throat> executive committee that passed unanimously that Mr. Rodriguez be professionally, uh, what's the word I'm searching for? Professionally evaluated, um, and that um, a um, third-party entity be <clears throat> be retained to do the evaluation, and come back and report to the executive committee its findings. Point of clarification for for, for, for next year. This for is the, your motion. That is the motion. Is there a second for discussion? If I may point say of clarification. something. Then, we have discussion. Point of order. Point of order. We, we, I just want to make a point. Motion, we already well, did. Well, one second, because I'm, I'm in control now. One person speaks at a time. We have a motion. I need a second for I'll discussion. Se I'll second uh, that. For purposes of discussion, I have a second for Mr. Wardman. Ms. Gutierrez. There is no need for a new motion in order to do that, because all I did was amend the motion with an increase. So it means that whatever was voted on that day which included the evaluation for oh, well, a separate contract. I, that's I, I withdraw my motion. I, I, I did not that's understand we, that. So you're voted. going. So I still think we need a third party to analyze his contract and come back to us with results. I'm not saying that we don't need that. I'm saying we do hmm. need that. I did not understand that either. But separate and aside to that. If that's what we voted this on. Year. Yeah. Well, hold We're on. making an amendment to I the made an amendment. Yes, and that is when okay. we first started the conversation, I made an amendment, and Martinez seconded. He understood extremely well where well, I Madam, was going Madam with Chair, this. if that's the case, I withdraw my motion, and I would request permission to change my vote to a yes, because uh, that, that was not my clear understanding. If, if that's all right with the, with, with, with the board. That's... Okay. Thank you very much. So, so, so my, my vote now, I, I now have the gavel, and my vote was a yes. Okay, we're now on item uh, 8D, approval of the extension of the general counsel's contract. Mr. Chairman. May 1st to August 31st. I'll move it. Sir, there's a motion and a second. Is there further discussion on item A D? You want to see something into the record? That her evaluation was also conducted at the same time oh. at executive committee, and, and thank and you, Pam, for your service. I just might add that both got 100, um, and the motion is recognized, and there's a second. Is there further discussion? Yeah, I'd like to make that year 2025, but... Uh, <laughs> the discussion, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. All right, now we have to go to an executive director, I'm sorry, to the, uh, no, 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 before we get to the approval of minutes. Oh, I'm sorry, it's an approval item. Approval of minutes moved by Luis I'll Martinez. move. Is there a second? A second. second. Is there further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 We, now, we now must go into the yeah, M Mr. Chair, uh, at this time, uh, Council is requesting to have a shade meeting to uh, both brief the board and to seek some advice uh, relating to current litigation, uh, Electronic Transaction, Transaction Consultants Corporation versus MDX. And uh, with us today will be uh, outside Council Joseph Sirota and Michael Ehrenstein and the Executive Director and members of the board. And if we can adjourn to the Next meeting, we expect that this will be about 20 or 30 minutes. Uh, well, uh, let me read this into the record. The time is now 5.05. We are about to have an attorney-client session in accordance with Florida Statute 
6.011 regarding the litigation styled electronic transaction consultants corporation versus Mr. Miami Dade Chairman, County uh, Expressway. Uh, I have to read this into the record. I'm sorry. Ahead. Case number 12 46272 CA 40 in the 11th Circuit uh, Judicial Circuit in and for Miami Dade County, Florida. The session is estimated to last 20 minutes. Uh, to 25 minutes, and the following people will be in attendance. All members of the board, the MDX attorneys, Pamela Leslie, Joseph Sorota, Michael Ernstein, and the executive director and deputy directors. Yes, sir. Mr. Chairman, I respect for those people in the audience. Is there anything else in the public comment session or uh, the public session that would... Sir, I would remind you that the public citizens' comments, I, I at, at your request, opened it, and I... I accepted three additional speakers that were not on here. There were no other speakers. That section is closed. It's finished. So there's As nothing else on the agenda. Oh. So. The committee report. The committee report. Sean. Okay, Mr. Chairman, if we could just go through that. So anybody in the audience that wants to listen to that doesn't have to sit for 30 minutes before we come back. So I would appreciate oh, if we just. Uh, let, me, let, let me ask uh, uh, Luis Martinez. Mr. Martinez, are you going to stay for this? Uh, you cannot. Okay. Then, then, I, then unless somebody else wants to do otherwise, I have no problems at going through the rest of the, uh, of the board, and then we'll leave the attorney. Uh, the attorney. I apologize, Mr. Martinez, that you cannot stay, or? Okay. We, we now then go to the general counsel's report. I'm sorry, executive director's report. Mr. Chairman. Um, I'm going to be brief. Construction update, 874 between the Palmetto and Kendall Drive. It's about 71% complete. Scheduled for completion in November of 2013. It's still on time and on budget. Central Boulevard, which goes into the Miami International Airport, is approximately 80% complete. It's scheduled for completion in October of 2013. Both projects are on time and on schedule. On March 20th, I attended a conference of Comto. Um, it was a land, air, sea, rail expo uh, event, uh, along with Florida DOT, airport, seaport, and other agencies. Discussed our programs, discussed the need to get more inner uh, connected with our programs, and uh, got a lot of interaction from minority firms that work in the transportation arena. On April 9th and 10th, uh, we participated in Team Florida, which was hosted here in Miami. The focus of that workshop for two days was on partnerships amongst public agencies and the future of managed lanes in South Florida. Uh, I thank the board members that attended uh, for the first time and I encourage other board members to attend when these types of conferences are, are close to home. On April 14th, 16th, Chairman Ferre, board member Rick Rodriguez-Pena, and I attended the mileage-based user fee and financial summit of the IBTT or International Bridge Tunnel and Turnpike Association. A lot of what's been discussed today as far as funding for transportation was discussed. It is well known that the gasoline, the federal gasoline tax has not been increased since 1993 and its buying power is diminished because of the more efficiency of, vehicle, of, of cars. There's a lot of discussion around the country in different DOTs and at the federal level of what would supplant the federal gas tax and one of those conversations is a mileage-based user fee. The conference centered along a lot of, of the uh, analysis that has been done for that. So it was very interesting. A lot of the issues with finance, you heard it at Budget and Finance today. It's a very good market right now, very low interest rates, and we took advantage of that. The other update I wanted to give the board uh, is on the, on the Centralized Customer Service Center, which is the four toll agencies in Florida, including Lee County, are partnering to have one centralized customer service center for tolling in Florida, one-stop shop, one invoice, one phone call, one phone number to call. I just drove from Miami to Tampa and I went through different, three different facilities that are managed by three different agencies. I would be getting bills from three different agencies. In the future, our goal is to have one bill and everything included in there and one phone call to make to resolve any issues and various retail centers that you can, call, you can walk in at the major urban centers so you can resolve your uh, individual issues. On April 25th, we, uh, we participated in an industry forum 
and this was held in anticipation of a release of a request for proposals that will be in August of this year. The schedule is to have a consolidated or a centralized customer service center operational by 2015, and staff is working with the other staffs of the other agencies in cooperation with the Transportation Commission to make that happen. My final reminder is that on May 16th, 2013, at the Shula Hotel in Miami Lakes between 12 and 5 p.m. is our 10th Annual Small Business Conference. I encourage anybody who's never attended a small business conference to sign up. It's fair. Can you guys hear me? No, we lost it. We lost power. You can tell. Hello? Okay. Um, I encourage anybody who's interested in attending the Small Business Conference to sign up on our website or contact Helen Cordero uh, in our office. And then finally, Mr. Chairman, as a personal note, because I'm never in Miami on April 30th, I'm usually in Tallahassee for session, and I'm never here for my wife's birthday. Today's my wife's birthday, so happy birthday. I know she's watching. With that, I'll answer questions. Right, any questions of the... Uh, so, you don't, so you don't have to buy a gift. Is that what the deal is? Got to buy oh, a okay, gift, yes. You better bring something any, home. Any questions of the executive director? All right, uh, general counsel, other than the shade meeting, is there anything that you want to report to us? No, sir, I'll defer everything to the shade meeting. So All that right, the MPO representative, Maritza, do you have anything for us? Yeah, I would have to yield to yeah. our executive director to report. I had an emergency that day, and I wasn't able to attend. Um, there was various items at the MPO on how the MPO is run and what constitutes quorum. There was pretty much no presentations because the, the, the meeting was truncated because of time constraints. So all those presentations were moved to next month. So there's really not much to report other than the modifications to the MPO's bylaws as far as quorum were adopted. So quorum is a majority of the folks present at the meeting. Rather than the, Rather total. Than the total, even if they're yeah, not there. That was actually a suggestion that I had made. Anything else? Uh, okay. Ms. Gutierrez. The treasurer's report has already been made. Mr. Chairman, I think the treasurer has said enough already today, uh, <laughs> unless you want to okay. hear it again. But, no. but, but I do emphasize yeah. that the 23rd, we do have that budget workshop at 10 o'clock, yeah. and uh, we have had great participation from fellow board members, and uh, I'd like to see all of you there, please. Thank you. All right, the committee reports of the Operations Committee. Is the chair, who's the, who's the chair of the Operations Mr. Martinez, who left. Mr. Martinez, who left. Uh, the items on the Operations Committee were addressed in the, in the agenda today as far as action. Next month's Operations Committee will include the, uh, the work program, for 2014 to 2018. All right, the uh, executive committee. I believe we went over. Is there, is there anything else you need to say today um, on this? At the appropriate. Yep, all right. The item is now item <coughs> 7C, which is the budget and finance committee. Uh, again, unless it's required uh, by a board member, I, we, we, I suggest we waive it. Informational items to come before us. No, Mr. sir. Oh, I would. Oh, hold, hold on. Then. I'm sorry. I've got, I've got the chair's comments. And no, no. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna recognize you, Shelley. But sir, I'm asking for a committee report. I'm sorry. And the, the committee and finance because there were some people that may not have been. Okay, here. then you're gonna get a budget report, not a problem. Marie. You're right. We, we had a, uh, well, slipped it through. But. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Marie. Would you like to do the treasure report? We did have the underwriters prepare a four-page slide for the benefit of the public. You want the on, short on version the last, or the long version? Of the last deal. Um, it was about four pages. Would you like them to present? Um, I'd like the short version. The short version. The synopsis version. would be fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We've seen these guys before. It is the short version. Mr. Thank Chair, you. Members of the committee. Or members of the board, I'm sorry. Where do we put the new Three, one? Right? Any two. A lot of work went into this. I think it's wonderful to share the good news. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Right there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, as we um, presented earlier to the Budget and Finance Committee, we summarize on the form or the sheet in front of you. Identify yourself, please. Jose Pagan with uh, Bank America Merrill Lynch. 
And with me is Jim Calpin, also with Bank America Merrill Lynch. <coughs> Excuse me. As I was saying, we summarized the transaction that we just completed. Um, it was for a par amount of $270,220,000 of the refunding bonds, refunding revenue bonds. Uh, the purpose of the issue was to refund and restructure for savings and cash flow <clears throat> certain outstanding bonds. We, the resultant transaction um, had $28.8 million in present value savings, or 9.7%. The interest cost was 3.568%. <clears throat> and the purpose really was to um, decrease the existing debt service between the years 2013 and 2016. And we reduced that debt by $33.3 million. Uh, I think, well, we know and we explained that we had this net uh, roadshow presentation for institutions and um, any individuals that wanted to hear about the operations of MDX so that they would get familiar with the credit, hopefully with the intentions that they would submit um, to buy the bonds when they were put to sale. Um, we had solid retail investor participation, institutional pricing was uh, very, very strong. Effectively, it was oversubscribed and um, there was 41 different institutional investors that participated in the sale. The total oversubscription was $1.1 billion for the $270 million of bonds. Thank you. Uh, yeah, three more pages. As mentioned, Jim Kalpin from Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, uh, just again in the abbreviated version. As Jose mentioned, uh, we wanted one of the goals was to diversify uh, and, and augment the institutional participation in the authorities bonds. And one way we were able to do that is to uh, use the electronic platform of a net roadshow. Um, staff, uh, senior staff and advisors presented a live presentation to the institutional market of approximately a 30, 40 minute presentation. Essentially much of the material that was covered in the preliminary offering document. Uh, and you can see on the right, uh, in terms of the, the institutional investors that access the roadshow, uh, over 20 different institutions, you'll see later that, uh, as mentioned earlier, over 41 institutions participated in putting in orders for the bonds, totaling in excess of uh, $900 million or $1.1 billion overall. Um, this page really summarizes some of the, the successes we talked to, in, in addition to the institutional marketplace, uh, we're looking again to capitalize on retail investors, um, local regional retail investors, uh, in-state regional investors, uh, I'm sorry, um, retail investors, uh, national retail investors, and then finally professional retail. We uh, strategically offer, we did not offer the entire transaction to retail investors. Uh, retails, retail investors typically buy at the front end of the curve the, the first 10 years. We offered approximately 160 million of the 270 million to, re or to the retail market uh, and received um, in excess of 104 million in orders from the retail community, uh, 12 and a half of which we deem to be you know, the mom and pop there's a growing trend of, of retail investors being um, serviced by professional retail. Those are uh, professional money managers. We then went into the institutional order period with a strong retail demand, which helped us leverage the pricing with institutions. Um, we, we garnered over 1.1 billion of orders for the re remaining bonds. Uh, and with that order flow, we were able to leverage the investors and lower yields by approximately two to 11 basis points across the curve, thereby reducing the cost of capital and improving the refunding and the savings over those near-term years, 13 to 16. You'll see the results we talked about in terms of uh, over or nearly 29 million in, in uh, PB savings and a very strong all in two, true interest costs of just over three and a half percent. You'll see the order flow by uh, priority in terms of the institutions, the retail, and then the underwriting syndicate, and then on the bottom right, some of the results of, uh, of the takedown across the syndicate in line and, and meeting with the, the goals and expectations of, of the board in terms of participation of the various syndicate members. 
Uh, this chart on the left shows the dotted line are the, the amount of maturities or the amount of bonds that were offered in each year. Uh, and, and really what you see is the green and yellow bars show the amount of orders for each maturity, which far outweighed, you know, it was across, across the entire uh, spectrum of maturities in terms of the, the demand from the institutional and the retail side. And then you'll see the resultant uh, yields on the right, ranging from under a half a percent in the early years to even on the longest end in 2033, a yield or borrowing cost of uh, just over 3.7 percent. And you can see on the far right, given the demand on the transaction, we were able to lower the cost of capital across the various maturities by two to 11 basis points. And then in uh, final chart here, is a list of the institutional investors. This was, you know, as we said, the goal was to diversify this mix, broaden the mix, and you see we had over 41 institutional investors participate in the order flow. The yellow indicate the new investors, the incremental or additive investors that uh, came to the table for this bond sale, which really uh, bodes well for the, the authority in, into the future and into future bond sales, because now you have a much wider audience that has, uh, has the attention of the market. So congratulations, and uh, on behalf of Jose and our team, we want to thank you for the opportunity. Well, thank you for such the hard work. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right, Mr. Chairman of the- Any other questions for uh, Mr. Holland? Well, just for the benefit of the public, because I know this sounded somewhat technical. Technically, what you had was a mortgage refinance where you saved about $33 million or $28 million right. to try to bring the cost of uh, your loans down. So. As good stewards of the money, we're trying to always find ways to save money in the process. So that's what the, the short version of that would have been. <laughs> we, we also had a feeding frenzy because of the quality of the, of the market in our financial sector. So that's, uh, that was, that's a pretty amazing uh, feat nowadays. So I thank appreciate you. the opportunity to share it with our colleagues that were not here before yes. because I think it's a big achievement. Thank you. If I may, I have another Please. information. Um, I'd like to say that I do appreciate the public coming out. And because of the public discourse, it suggests that it is advisable to further consider the level of the ORT toll rates. So at this time, I'd like to make a motion to send out for public review for a new toll rate of 60 cents on all mainline gantries on the State Road 836 to be brought back to us, the board, at the May 28th meeting. And a resolution be created that will go out with the May board package. Time is of the essence. This is my motion. The motion is that this be put on the May 28th agenda. Prior to the May 28th agenda, preceding policy per our bylaws to go out for public review. All right. Um, second for purposes of discussion. Well, there's a second for the purposes of discussion. Uh, excuse me, uh, Board Member Wartman. Um, Ms. Leslie, um, as I understand the procedures here, is that um, the motion is that we go through the process uh, which would require advertising, and there's a 20-day process. And explain exactly what what the thrust of this motion is. Mr. Will Chair, be. Uh, the Expressway Authority has a public involvement policy that requires, uh, prior to any modification of toll rates, that the matter go out to the public with at least one public review, um, and then prior to vote, there would have to be a public hearing, and then a vote of the board on a resolution to modify the toll rates. So as the motion was made, I cannot accept that motion as it was made. Uh, no, I think the motion was perfectly fine. Okay, so the motion is that we are gonna hear this and we're gonna have a public hearing before the 28th? No, sir, I believe that Vice Chair uh, Smith Fano said that she would like to have the 60 cent option on State Road 836 Mainline go out for public review. And that that process be completed in order for it to come back before the board at its May board meeting. And so th therefore we have to do that before the May board meeting? Yes, sir. The public involvement policy requires at least one public review meeting to be held. Uh -huh. There are certain advertising requirements for that public review that at least 10 days prior to the public review and no more than seven days before 
that the second notice of that would be published in a publication of general circulation. Prior to that uh, second notice, there would have to be one also in a publication okay. of general circulation. So there are two notices that are required. There would be two notices, one for 10 days and the other one for seven? No, is one, that? One, one would be prior to the 10 days out, and then the second notice is the one that has the time frame constraint. Okay. The second notice must be made no more than 10 days before the public review and no less than seven days before. The public review would... Our board meeting is May, what, 28th? Yes, sir. So we have enough time to accomplish all of this before May uh, 28th. That's something that I think people that handle public involvement could answer better than I could. I don't know what the logistics are. Mr. Is. Chairman, does, uh, does it have hold to go? Hold it, hold it, hold it, because he, he has the next Wardman and then you. But, 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 but I, I'm still trying to, I'm in the question period trying to understand what the, so the motion is in order. It's been seconded. <clears throat> uh, under discussion now, is that correct? Is uh, I name? believe that the if I have been able to state the motion in, in your place, Mr. Chair, that it is on the floor for discussion. Yeah, okay. So, so Mr. Wartman, you're first and you're second. Okay. Uh, you asked most of my question. I have a, con a continuing part. Um, if this, we get the information back on May 28th, does that mean we're able to vote on, the, on it? or does that continue the process for a certain period of time? Uh, help me on this. I'm not the sure timeline. I understand what you mean by getting okay. information back. Okay, right now uh, what the vice chair has put forward is to go through a certain process. Right. The process you explained, it seemed like a long time, a lot more than 30 days, but I don't know. I'm trying to find out, is, does that mean that <clears throat> if that comes back and the board wanted to vote on it, it could vote on in, that in or... In order for the board to have a vote, the, the public uh, involvement process has to be completed. Now, whether logistically that can be accomplished, I've stated what the advertising requirements are. And if staff is able to locate a place and do the advertisement, and it depends on the number of public reviews, we're required by policy to do a minimum of one the executive director under the policy at his discretion determines what the appropriate number of public reviews are. If the board wants to give him some guidance on what you think would be the appropriate number of public reviews, that probably will drive how long it would take to c accomplish all of those. But the policy requires a minimum of one public review. There must be two advertisements <coughs> of that public review. There's nothing in the policy that says how long before the first notice of that public review must occur, but the second notice can be no more than nor less than no more than 10 days and no less than 7 days prior to the public review. After that there must be according to the toll policy uh, and the bylaws there must be a public hearing on any toll modification. And that can occur in con as we did on May 19th prior to the board meeting or as part of the board meeting? March 19th. Yeah. I'm sorry, March 19th, excuse Ms. me. Mr. Chairman, I just want to know the budget and finance is not involved in the process, right? Or uh, the, the bylaws require oh, hold, the hold, budget. Hold, hold, hold it, hold it. I'm sorry. Are you finished? Um, I was <laughs> trying to ask uh, the vice chair, you were planning on having this back for a vote on May, tw uh, May 28th? <coughs> Or depending, I'd also like to hear from the other members of staff if it is physically feasible, theoretically it is, but is it physically feasible or is this going to happen in June or July? Uh, I don't have the answers to that. So if you're asking me the asking question, you first, if it that is indeed goal? physically feasible, yes, I would like it to come before the board on May 28th. That is my idea. And then my question to staff who would be handling this Okay, is that physically feasible, not just theoretically feasible? Ident identify, Terry. Terry Garcia. Terry Garcia. <laughs> it would be logistically feasible, but you would have to take into consideration that um, there could probably be one meeting um, 
and uh, the advertisement, you know, we would have to do the required one, obviously. The last time, there was a lot more effort put into getting that notification out. For example, um, just one example, we have the uh, uh, Turnpike Assist Us with SunPass emails. That was 350,000 emails that were sent out. Uh, I, I'm not sure that physically that could be done. Um, we did several other um, uh, 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 mailings uh, in, 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 um, in, in um, newspapers and magazines and things like that for over almost a million um, distribution. That could not be done. But certainly the required advertisement, one meeting, it could be done. With your, with your questions. I was just going to ask um, the vice chair, okay, uh, the one meeting, is that was your goal or a multitude? Okay. I, her motion was one meeting. Was just one meeting? No, that was not oh, my I'm motion. Sorry. I'm sorry. No, my motion was to do what was necessary. And after hearing the bond folks talk about an electronic road show, I don't see why we couldn't incorporate maybe something like that and be a little more now about how we address the communication with so the, the question the is, is, is it one meeting, madam? No, Mister? sir, the meeting's necessary. The meeting's necessary. If I, may, I wasn't limiting it. If I may, we, we posted a presentation on the website. We can do that, too. We can certainly, via email, advise uh, certain groups and uh, that we keep in contact. We use the MPO database. Uh, they send mails out uh, to... Uh, many organizations, we did that the last time. You know, there will be some limitations, obviously, but we can do that type of thing. Now, what I want to make sure is that we can certainly do whatever needs to be done, but that the expectation that there's going to be a major um, effort of outreach is, 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 is difficult. But certainly, with the public here, the organizations that are here, I'm sure that they will assist in this. So. So yes, required can be done, and we can go a bit beyond, but not as much as we did the last time. We can have elect electronic on the, uh, on, on the website, because it takes time to prepare for that, um, and, and then one meeting. But I'm not sure that we can have I multiple heard. meetings, that there's time for that. All right, I, 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 hold, hold on, uh, Carlos. Uh, the, the order of speaking now is Gonzalo is next. Mm -hmm. Maritza is next, is, is second, and you're third. Oh. I, I asked the technical question of uh, council. Is um, budget and finance supposed to also meet in uh, meet for this kind of decision making, or is it going straight to the board? Um, Just want to know. The requirement in the bylaws, Mr. Sanabria, is that the budget and finance committee uh, review uh, the proposed toll uh, change. My understanding is that that was done, that there was a discussion of what the impact of the 60 cents would be, so that is taken care of. So that was done. Yes, okay, sir. thank you. Ms. Gutierrez. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, uh, Council, for uh, addressing the fact that we already reviewed the 60 cents. Um, regarding the, the use of informing the community that we're having a public hearing, and that we're giving consideration to 60 cents, which basically means not increasing the tools. Um, I think we need to embrace technology. The same way that ORT is technology, we need to embrace technology because we all know that the program that was used before is probably a very antiquated program because hardly anybody assisted. And we can say it's not because they didn't care it's because maybe they didn't hear it or because they felt that it was going to be business as usual. So I'm going to take the latter. It's probably because it was going to be business as usual. So in this case, I, I ask all those that work in the communication to sit down and come in with a comprehensive plan and, and give that advice to our executive director and then he communicated to all of us. So it comes in a little bit more elaborate, more comprehensive, and less cumbersome. And 
closer to the people that will be affected when these gantries are going up and going to be collected. And when I say closer to, meaning right here in this area that is close to 836 and 112, that it doesn't go all the way all around town. So we close in and we expand the reach of who we're going after. Um, and secondly, I have a question. Go ahead. Now that we're embracing a hearing, so we can get to the 60 cents discussion, which means that we would then later consider a vote, which would then later be a change in the action that already took place in the last board meeting. What do we need to do in the meantime to make sure that we could do that? Do we need to call for a rescind of what already exists or that can happen at a later date? No, uh, Member Gutierrez, the board is required to follow its bylaws and its its adopted policies. Uh, there has been a toll rate adopted on March 19th, and that's the toll rate in effect. Uh, at any time that the board wants to modify a toll rate, it must follow its public involvement policy, it must follow its bylaws, and it must follow its toll policy. Uh, as we just discussed, the matter for a 60 cent mainline toll rate has been discussed by the Budget and Finance Committee, so check that one off. Uh, if you follow the public involvement policy that's been adopted by this board. It does require, as I laid out, the public involve, the public review. Uh, and then we are required both by the toll policy and our bylaws to have a public hearing as to any change in toll rates. So those are the three things that you have to comply with. One of them's been taken care of already. We're on our way. Thank you. We're on our way if it passes, obviously. Yes. Mr. Chairman, just a since we have an expedited time frame, one suggestion may be that we do something through the internet, like a town hall meeting or something to reach as many people that can, may not physically attend. They can do something via the internet from their computers and some type of communication, just to expand that because it is an expedited time frame. So for consideration, particularly to staff, that uh, when we do this outreach, we may want to try some type of a town hall meeting or something mm -hmm. utilizing technology, specifically the internet and people's ability to give their input without physically having to go somewhere. Okay, any other questions? Yes, Mr. Chairman, I just, um, I'm, I'm gonna vote in favor of the motion and I think it, uh, it should be heard and, and the public should have another bite at the apple, so to speak. But I, I want to make it very clear there this is a 10 cent reduction from 70 to 60 to be entertained at a public hearing, and then the board will come back. And it's not a zero toll or anything of the sort. It's a reduction from 70 to 60 cent. That is the that's the, that is your motion, correct? A reduction from 70 to 60 cents. That was your motion. I'm talking about 836. Well, what, if I may. What was, what was the, clarify your motion, if you may. Maria Luisa, could you read the motion that I made back so that it's, thank you. Is to go through the process of the 60 cent option, including the public hearings and the. For 836? For 836, go through the process of the public hearings, the public reviews for the option of 60 cents on only 836, correct? I can read it again. I have it written. Okay. Like okay, of 60 cents on 836. Wait, 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 wait. Go ahead. Let, let her read it again into the record. To send out for public review for new toll rate, because we would be doing a new toll rate, lowering the toll rate that's in existence right now, on all major line gantries on State Road 836 to be brought back to the board at the May 28th meeting and a resolution be created that will go out with the May board package. Uh, I'm trying to understand what that means in terms of dollars and cents, so I, I need some definition. I'm it was what you went over in budget and finance today, those the two comparisons. Correct. That's the $104 million? Yes, um, sir. Okay. Now, when, when, when the public hearing takes place and, and people in the public see this, they, they, they need to see a chart where the one rate gives us so many projects and the other rate gives us fewer projects. So that's, is that the intention also of the public hearing to educate the people it's in terms of To be transparent with the public and show them exactly what they get dollar for okay. dollar. All yes, right. sir. Then, then I will support it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to 
Chairman, am I am I still on the waiting line? Yes, no, or? you're 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 the next speaker. Okay. If we're going to do this, I I ask respectfully that we instead of hurrying it for the May meeting, that we do the appropriate thing to notify all the possible participants and extend the time frame to receive public comments beyond the May meeting and look at this at a window in June. With all of the outreach that we had, and I, I was going to ask that we get a real quick recap of, of what the actual turnout was after all that we did for the first go around. If, if we really have an interest in hearing the public, let's, let's do this right. The rate increases are not immediate. They, they, they go into effect much further down the line. Let's have an extended period to do the process of notification properly, to engage as many stakeholders as possible within the corridor, and to get the appropriate feedback from the grassroots. Because it's a real shame to hurry this for the main meeting unnecessary. All right. Uh, you've heard uh, Carlos Fernandez's uh, recommendation. Uh, Gus? Uh, just for a point of clarification, um, we just had a presentation regarding uh, bond refinance, and I guess there were certain representations that this committee had already endorsed an increased toll uh, amount, and that you know certain bondholders may have now have expectations of an increased right. revenue stream. I just would like to have a clarification for, from my point of view to make sure that uh, we don't get charged with other actions that uh, that certain municipalities get charged with Board when Member they Pedro, try to defraud. If we could have uh, our bond counsel, Lewis Ryder, address that for us, I think that Mr. that would be the person with the most knowledge on that Mr. issue. Mr. Ryder, the chair recognizes you. Thank you. That, that's a fair point. Uh, it was disclosed in the offering document that the rate increase has passed, but we also included language uh, right after. I don't have the document in front of us. We can I can get it, I'm sure that said that, that any change in toll rates is subject to further revisions. So there is disclosure to that effect. Having said that, I will tell you that this is something that investors do look at. I mean, I, I can't speak for the investors. I'll defer to the underwriters on that. But the investors do look at sort of the rate structure. Uh, because uh, that's their security. We're at, we're at the question period. Are there any questions? All right, there's a request for the underwriters to, to step up and speak. I don't know how many underwriters are left. Uh, Merrill Lynch is here. Um, I, I see other underwriters in the back of the room, but that, that's something that they want to speak to the issue. Well, Lewis is, Lewis is absolutely correct. We do have those representations in the official statement. Um, but there's the concern that there's a certain time period of the underwriting period has not Past and uh, if something would occur before, is it? What is the underwriting period? Is it 60 days or 30 days? My understanding from, from discussions with Mr. Kalpin is, is that the, law, the securities law provides that the underwriting period is, starts, on the closing, but goes, starts on the closing date and runs through either 25 days or 90 days after they've gone rid of the bonds. My well, understanding if it's is 25 that, days, I don't have any problem. Right, and I believe... Days, we I really need to, have problems. Right. My, my understanding is that the bond, the underwriters were not holding any bonds for resale on the closing date. If that's the case, it is a 25-day period. Okay. That, 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 that deals with sort of what's called Rule 15C to 12, which is disclosure. There's still the other question of a general disclosure from the standpoint of the investors of what, what you guys are doing with rates. I mean, that's, that's, there are two different issues. Well, One is the question of when this deal closed and the underwriting period for that deal post-closing, which we believe is 25 days from well, April 23rd. All right, I would like to ask both of you, since you're, you stay there, Jose, I'd I, sure. I like to ask the following question. Um, in, the, in the State Transportation Monitoring and Oversight Report, it reports that on the, in March of 2013, MDX approved a tolling plan where current untold segments and so on. So in other words, it reports it here. The, we have agencies that rate our bonds. Those rating agencies uh, also have opinions. We have the investing community that also sees something where there's a flip within a 60-day period. 
I strongly re recommend that we vote against this, and I ask you the question. Um, I'm asking it formally to Merrill Lynch whether or not it is your professional opinion, and if anybody in the in the uh, in the finance community that is here uh, wishes to address the issue, I'd be happy to to recognize you too. But I want your professional opinion as to whether this type of a reversal in such a short order, with that, by that I mean 60 days from March 19th to the 28th, will undo a tremendous amount of good that this MDX board has accomplished uh, and will, will further uh, seriously dampen the, the investing community's look at MDX. That's a question. Uh, I'm not sure I can answer that. Um, from the underwriter's point of view, um, or the guys that actually market sell the bonds. But it, you know, the, the rating agencies, when they did their review, had all this information. And everything was- That, in, we, were, that we were gonna change? Well, no, that the, uh, yes. I mean, they did their review, and it was, everything was disclosed that what, what actions the board have taken. Right, Ms. Lewis? Well, wait, you're saying that the board, that the rating agencies knew that we were going to change from 70 to 60 cents? No. Is that what no, you're think, saying? I think what he's saying is the rating agencies were aware that, uh, it, was being, that, that it was under discussion and consideration oh, in see. terms of a, okay. not, not necessarily the outcome, but that, yes. And, and I think to the point about uh, doing harm, I think our job in working with council is to have the most current and the most uh, accurate disclosure. And as Lewis is pointing out, it was properly disclosed that there could be further action that could be taken. So, Lewis is looking at the language. Are there any other investment bankers that want to speak to this? I'm going to recognize you in a moment. You're, you're next, then I think Maritza, and then, and, I'm sorry? Uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Guzman is next. I, I stand corrected. Yeah. Mr. Fernandez Guzman is next, then you are. If, inter if you're interested in the language, the, um, the section of the toll rates in the offering document does say the last sentence. It talks about the increase in the rates on March 19th, and then it, there's a last sentence that says the authority's toll policy and toll rates are subject to amendment and adjustment from time to time by the authority. So we did, we did enclose that. Randy? Okay, Randy Topol for Southwest Financial Advisor. While uh, you have the right to lower the tolls at any time or raise the tolls at any time after you go through the proper procedure, I can say the perception will not be as good as if you just initiated a 60 cent toll rate the first time. You're going to be going backwards. It will not be viewed as, as well. The rating agencies didn't feel like there was an action needed to take once that disclosure came out that you could review and potentially change your policy because they wanted to wait to see what action you take. Uh, I, can, I can say pretty clearly that while it may not cause a downgrade, it will not be viewed as favorably as what if you would have just started off with a straight 60 cent. Now, now, during the process of marketing the bonds, during all the different conversations, when the question was asked, we, we told them what was approved and that at that point, that further discussions were going on. But as all buyers do, they'll hear that the rates were approved. So that's just something for consideration. Thank you. Uh, any, all right, Carlos is the next speaker. Carlos, the chair recognizes Mr. Fernandez Guzman. Well, I, I have the same concern that Randy has, and I am I'm very, uh, I'm very pleased that Gus brought it to light. The, the issue here is that you just floated a bond in the market that was just purchased by investors based on certain premises that were represented, and now, immediately after that issuance and purchase, you are now modifying the actual debt service 
numbers to a lower number. So I, my only point of caution is this would be no different than you applying for a mortgage and saving an income, getting approved, and then saying, oh, well, we made a boo-boo, the income is 30% less. Uh, it, it, it just, um, and you can close on the house. It's a bit of an issue. All right, the next uh, question is Al, you're next, and then um, Maritza, okay. and, then, Couple of quick questions. and then Rick. What is the potential effect of that reaction by the market? Is it, is it going to come to a cost of those 30, $33 million in savings that are going to go down, mm -hmm. or, or what would be the effect? Yeah. No, I, I want to clarify something first. The document that was put out had no reflection of a toll rate increase whatsoever. The implication that the board action <coughs> took, we will not say that they did not imply that those revenues were going in, but we never disclosed that those revenues were there and they had them available to them. That's the first point. The next point that you said, it will have no impact on your savings. If you're downgraded, the local investors that bought those bonds will now have something of less value because you are in a partnership with your bondholders. And you are taking the responsibility that when they buy something from you, that it's worth X dollars. If you take an action that could cause that value to go down, that is, that is a problem. Yeah. And that would probably be reflective in the next time we go for a bond offering. Yeah, the, the implication is the next bond issue, uh, you would not see the, as many new investors because they wouldn't know what was happening. And it's, it's, a, it's a finicky market compared to where it was years ago. You, you, you don't want to lose the trust of the investing public, especially if you have a large capital program. My other question is to staff. Uh, if, in fact, this passes, are you coming back to us with a detailed explanation of where we're going to cut this $100 million? We had that presentation at Budget and Finance, but we'd be more than happy to, it wasn't to walk in. Finance, but I'd like, yeah. I'd like to understand what's, what's... Yeah, it's a reduction of $104 million. I heard the total number, but correct. I don't know what the projects, projects are going correct. to be eliminated. Correct. Would, would you like, would you show all that information now? Yeah, sure. Uh, Maritza, while, while uh, we get that information for Al, yeah, I, I think the, the importance is, first, I wanted a point of clarification because our treasurer said uh, 10 cents. And so I wanted to ask our executive director um, what really 60 cents equals to and what 70 cents really equals to because it's not really 10 cents. Uh, and, you know, it's Ms. funny Kutu how I'll it just sounds like 10 cents, but it isn't 10 cents. So the question to you is this, and I'm going to phrase it like this because I like to keep it straight in my head. Right now, the rate that we have, if I, because we're on 836 and we're traveling east and I picked it up at 97th, I pay how much there? At 97th Avenue, it's 75 cents. Okay, and if I keep going and I clock through 17th Avenue, how much do uh, I pay there? Sun Pass rate is a dollar. So I got a total of $1.75. Correct. So if I go with 60 cents and I travel again and I pick that up at 97, what does that mean? That would be 60. And then I keep going down 836 and what happens to me? 57th Avenue would be 60 and 17th Avenue would be 60, so and it would be $1.80. And that adds $1.80. It would be $1.80 eastbound. So, so in essence, what I did by revisiting this toll rate is I actually didn't really much increase because when I first introduced the idea of 60, it was really just rounding the figure, but going back to the same figure that we had. Um, if we go 70 cents, what, what does that really mean? Um, I picked it up at 97th Avenue. And eastbound, the eastbound trip would be $2.10 if you go under the three gantries. So the difference between 60 and 70 is 30 cents. If you make the entire trip from Turnpike to 95. 30 cents going one way. Eastbound, eastbound, eastbound. correct. But if I picked it up on the other direction, now going if west. If you go westbound, it? it goes up from 75 cents. If you went all the way out to 97th Avenue, 
With 70 cents, it would go up to $2.10, and with 60 cents, it would go up to $1.80. Okay, so, so it's, it's a big increase. difference. So the, the funny of the 60 and the 70, it may sound like nothing, but it's huge dollars for any one particular driver. Um, having heard uh, what our bound councils are saying and all the financial advisors, and we pay very good money to get good, sound advice, and thus far it's worked precisely correctly. I, I think if we're going to revisit this, and I think the right thing to do is to revisit, at least we owe it to the public to revisit this and see what we could achieve with less, it, it, it's very important that if we're going to do that, that we don't hold a gun to our head in making that decision. So we can come back to the people that look to us for sound and surety is that we do it and we took at all avenues, that we don't come back with this time frame, that we say it has to be done you know, in 15, 20, 30 days, that we do it right, that we cross our T's, dot our I's, because we're giving a commitment to this community that we are revisiting it, but that we do it and it is, and it, it isn't, it is what it is, that we are revisiting it and we will reconsider <coughs> doing it right, but that we are very careful in doing so. So that way, um, the people that have invested in our bonds know that we gave this careful thought and when we went out to market, we told every possible soul that we could reach so we don't cut corners. That's the key that I wanna go in and say. So, and I know you're the maker of the motion and I second it, that you consider that, that we don't cut corners in informing the community, that we have a public hearing, that we have a review, that we are very careful and very comprehensive because to tell you the truth, the last time we did, as we think, a thorough comprehensive approach, but it didn't yield great results because a lot of people didn't attend so we can turn around and we can say, hey, you didn't do a good job reaching. I need to go back and feel better that we did a better job reaching this community and let them know that this is happening. So. Ms. Garcia, if I have a, may ask you a question, what would you say would be a fair amount of time to do a comprehensive um, going out to the public time frame? Into the record, please, into the microphone. Because I have no problem changing my motion. I was just working with the time frame that was given to me. So that. Well, I, I think that the one question that needs to be raised also is the work program, which I think it does come in May. Exactly. So I think that was the urgency of the time. Um, so, um, thank you for clarifying that because I didn't want everyone to think I did it arbitrarily. It was based on information that was given to me. And uh, I guess the question is public notification um, that we are calling it public outreach. I think if we want to um, to to um, meet the requirements of the of having a work program in place. Um, then we could do the required. I think we can look and investigate um, uh, what other things could do, like an electronic meeting. Let me, let me just make a, a clarification here. Public reviews, in public reviews there are no presentations. What we have is in fact a set of all the projects that we are proposing uh, with costs. We have uh, the rates, um, we have frequently asked questions, and we have your staff there to do uh, answer questions and provide information on a one-to-one. -one. Um, so there's no formal presentation as there is in a webinar, as in fact as in the work program uh, public hearing that DOT District 6 uh, does or the Turnpike. So we would have to modify if you if we are to 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 investigate those things. I think we can, but we have to manage expectations. But if I would uh, 
I would point out the issue of the work program, and then if you want an answer beyond that, I can provide that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I just also would like to say into the record, although I truly respect our partnership with the bondholders, I also equally respect our partnership with the toll payers. All right, Rick, you're next. This question to uh, our council here. Um, uh, Randy, Mr. Topol mentioned that um, the bonds would have less value would there be any legal implications? You know, could we potentially be at risk for some type of legal action by saying, well, it's not what you sold me? Any, I just want to discard that or put it into record for consideration. I'll, I'll go back to what our bond counsel, Lewis Ryder, said, and he quoted the language that's in the official statement that it did note that um, toll rates are subject to change. Um, as Randy said, I think that the expectation of the um, ratings agencies is that you don't have rapid fluctuations in doing something and then undoing something. Um, whether there would be any liability, um, I, I would probably defer to bond counsel on that, but, but I think that he spoke to that to the extent that uh, there was disclosure in the official statement. Um, what, what Randy, I believe, said, and I'll let him correct me, it does not necessarily mean that there will be a per se downgrade, but if there were a per, if there were a downgrade, then the bonds that people bought would be worth less. That was one issue. The second issue was then when you go out for future bond issuances that the stability and reliability of the representations of this authority might not be looked on as favorably, and so you might have a greater cost of funds in the future. Thank you. I have a, a quick follow-up, Mr. Chair. Uh, and I just might, might add, without doubt. Yeah. Um, there's no precedence, in other words, uh, there's no precedence that exists where anybody's been uh, part of a, some litigation for doing what we may be considering. I apologize, I was doing a sidebar and I didn't hear your full question. Yeah. Is there any precedents out there, any existing examples where uh, the what we're considering doing and if we do in fact um, decide to change the, the, the fees, is there any precedents that exist uh, where a, an authority, an organization has entered, been sued in essence? Um, I'm going to have to again defer to bond counsel because that's out of my area of expertise. Well, let's get. You know, um, before I answer the question, let, let, let's let's take a step back for a moment because I do think we need to keep something else in mind. The authority has a contract with the bondholders. That's called a trust indenture. The trust indenture has a rate covenant, which is the amount of coverage you need to provide with your tolls and other revenues against debt service. That's the only contract you have with your bondholders. In the offering document, what we disclosed was that rates had been increased, that rates are subject to adjustment, and in all the pro formas, uh, financial numbers that were included in the offering document, the rate increases were not part of the projection. So I, I do think you need to keep, keep this in mind. Um, you know, th there is a fair question as to what the impact is in investors and what it does to your investor relations, and I can't speak to that. But in terms of your obligation, I think you've met your obligation in the offering document. You've disclosed that rates are subject to adjustment. I mean, were they expecting a month after you issued the bonds that the rates would be potentially reduced? Probably not, but it was disclosed there. And you are still complying with the contract you have with your bondholders, which is the trust indenture. So I think we ought to keep that in mind. Uh, to your question, I mean, I can't think of any, but you know, the plaintiff's bar is pretty innovative, and I suspect somewhere in the country there's been a lawsuit. I just can't speak to that. But, right. but I think the more important question is sort of what, what you have a, have agreed with your bondholders and the disclosure that was that was included in the offering document. Mr. Holland. Sure. So with that position, we received a document that recommended 42 cents. You wouldn't see that as a deviation in the bond indenture agreement that would cause any concern? Is there a percentage sure. decrease? Member Holland, I'm not, I'm not sure I follow your question. I apologize. 
we're talking about possibly going back and rolling it back from the 70 to 60. Right, correct. And you're saying that the, uh, the debt coverage was already provided in the bond? Uh, right. You have a trust in the interest that's been in effect since 1996. It was amended in 2002 that has a rate covenant. You're in compliance with the rate covenant, and my understanding is you'll be in compliance with the rate covenant even without this rate increase. Right. But I think his question is, well, why not 42 cents? And I will oh. tell you, though, when we met the rating agencies, we showed them a work program of projects and unfunded projects. And we made representations to the rating agencies saying we would complete these projects with the additional revenue that's coming in. It's not in this financing plan. And, and, and you know, the rating agencies gave us a pass. They wanted a 150 coverage. And in the last couple of years, we always had planned for a 150. We got down to 140, below 140. Um, and, you know, they knew additional revenue stream was coming in. But as far as, you know, I can't, Lewis is, is the bond counsel, he's the attorney, but I know that what we sat and what Alfred Lurgados, Steve Adrick, and the executive director made representations to the rating agencies, we said that we were going to complete these work programs and those unfunded projects were going to get funded through the additional revenue stream. We did make that statement yeah. to the rating agencies. Yeah, and let me clarify, I'm not, I'm not speaking to so the representations to the investors or to the rating agencies. What I was speaking to is what the contract between the authority and the bondholders is, which is a totally different issue. Right. And that's why I defer to others in terms of investor relations and rating agencies. Final, and then Ms. Gutierrez. I just would like a point of clarification. A scenario, we go to 60 cents, we're still increasing revenue, correct? Yes. Thank you. All right, Ms. Gutierrez. Thank you. You know, that was going to be one of the questions. The second question is, did we make representation that we were going ORT? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, that, but that's, that's okay. been, that's not this, I mean, that's, that's been true since the 2010, 2010. OS. Yeah, so that, okay. that's been out there since, I think, 2010. So even with this consideration, no one is not saying that we are not going ORT. We are ORT, which is electronic tolling and the new tolling points. So the, the next question is the following. In any of the documents, any of the representations that we've gone out to market, has consideration be given to the new toll increase? In other words, have we used those numbers? Have we put them into the mix and played with those numbers in terms of are we representing those new numbers that are supposed to come in to play next year, not this year? From a financing perspective, no, we did not. Okay. And I will tell you in public documents, a lot of investors did watch the March 19th meeting, and I personally spoke to a lot of investors. As the underwriters indicated, we had one-on-one -on -one discussion with them. So the document of the toll policy and the rate that was passed was public record to the investors. So if they watched, Mr. Chair, if they watched, which is excellent, they also must have seen the vote, which means that the vote was divided, the 7-6, which means that consideration is, is being given. That, that's basically all I needed to say. All right. Are there any further questions? I think we're, we've asked a lot of questions. Just a comment, Mr. Chair. Yes, absolutely. Uh, comment. So some people are having some Thanks. hard. What? Some people are having a little bit of a heartburn with a short fuse date. May I suggest, and you were open for suggesting, may I suggest June 18th, which is our board meeting. Maybe we can start a little earlier, and that way we uh, satisfy that we've done the utmost effort in getting this across the public. So does I the suggest. Maker, does the maker of the motion accept June 18th? I would modify for June 18th. And yes. the seconder accepts it. Any further comments, questions? Chairman Frey, can you hear me? I can hear you. Who is this? This is uh, Luis Martinez. Yes, yes, Mr. Martinez. May I uh, ask a couple of questions, sir? Because I, 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 I came back on to the uh, to, to join in on this on this vote. If I, and I may have missed some of the things. Um, may I ask a couple of questions of the director, sir? Yes, yes. We, thank go you. Ahead, go ahead, uh, Mr. Director. Ms. Gutierrez indicated a concern that now we're going to be obviously um, closing the entire dolphin um, both ways. What percentage on the evaluation that you have done of our riders go the full distance back and forth, uh, west to east and east to west? 
Do you understand my question? Yes, of course. Mr. Martinez, back in the workshop in October when we laid out five options, and actually it was the basis, the, 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 the analysis we did was the basis of the introduction of the discount program. It's roughly 8 to 10 percent of the, of, the, of the commuters that do the entire round trip in a particular day. Most of the folks that use 836 do it in shorter segments or use it in one direction and take a different route in, uh, in, the, in the opposite peak. That's what we've seen, and that's why um, I believe the discount program was presented to address that small percentage that was going to do the entire trip, round trip. Now, and I, and I apologize, since um, on the vote that was done on the March 19th, was there also an inclusion of a discounted program for those who did the full trip? And actually, it was expanded, uh, not only for 836, but for anyone who got on the MDX system, if they met minimum thresholds on, on usage, there would be a discount afforded to them. And that, that was the subject of the other vote. Okay, and that actually did pass, correct? Yes, it did. And today we received from, 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 and I asked this to the motion, those who, are in, who made this motion, today we received a packet about possibly going down to 42 cents uh, per mile. Are we considering that as well in the future, or are we sticking to either what has already passed or reducing it to 70 cents, or are we going to open the door to allow what was presented to us today about 42 cents um, uh, a gantry to be considered as well? How, how are we going to deal with that issue? Because my concern, quite frankly, is I don't want to revisit this every two to three months, because we need to move forward. Mr. Martinez, as maker of the motion, I did not include the 42 cents, nor will I include the 42 cents. It's the same. Thank you, Ms. Fanny. I appreciate that. That's just well, I don't want to so go that, back and forth either, unless my colleagues here on the board offer a suggestion to go with the 42. I that was not in my realm of thinking. And the reason I asked Ms. Fano is I joined this a little bit late, so I wasn't sure if that had been discussed earlier. I wasn't in any way implying anything else. I just wanted that to be cleared from my own, from my own mind. Thank you. I understand. Thank you. Anybody else? Any other questions, Mr. Martinez? No, no. I, 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 right. Nothing further. Mr. Fernandez Guzman, any further questions? Mr. No. All right, are there any other questions? All right, I'm going to make a statement and then I'm going to let you have the last word in the closing statement, uh, Madam Vice Chair. Um, I think the questions that have been asked are pertinent and um, important. Um, it is my opinion, having been through many, many of these types of issues before, that a reversal uh, by this board will cost severely. And I think it will cost us money, it will cost us prestige, and I think it is exactly the, the worst type of, of, of action where a board uh, goes back um, on a very carefully thought out and thought through process where we had five, four different uh, uh, presentations publicly where we spent $150,000 advertising. We will now spend an, another amount of money to do this process. I'm sure it won't be $150,000, but it'll be a, a major amount of money. Uh, I think um, this is exactly the type of action that rating agencies look at and see inconsistency, and uh, uh, these type of changes are detrimental to the future expansion uh, of our road system. F furthermore, I think uh, this thing had the recommendation <clears throat> of the administration. Uh, it came with a strong recommendation, uh, and after a lot of work that was done, uh, it was voted on in committee. The chairman of the committee voted for it, as did the, uh, the rest of the committee. It passed, it passed on a seven to six vote uh, at, the, at the board level. Um, and I'm talking about the budget and finance committee. 
I'm not talking about any other committee. I'm talking about the, the Budget and Finance Committee. <clears throat> and I think that for us to be reversing in this type of a, ma of a manner uh, is um, very problematic for the future of MDX. And that's my considered opinion. And I leave you with the last word. Thank you, Mr. Frey. Um, it did not pass unanimously in budget and finance. I didn't say okay. I said, I said the chair. Okay. Thank you, sir. I just want to urge the citizens and the people that are, if this does pass, because I can't read the future, but if it does, to be sure to speak to your neighbors, speak to your friends, speak to your relatives, and let us hear your voices. Because as was mentioned, we had four public reviews and had very little attendance. So if you want to be heard, be there if this passes. Thank you very much and I appreciate and respect all my colleagues. Thank you. <coughs> We're ready for a vote, so call the roll please. Mr. Fernandez Guzman. <coughs> Mr. Fernandez, are you there? I, I do not favor the motion. Okay. Mr. Gonzalez? Yes. Ms. Gutierrez? Yes. Mr. Holland? Absolutely, I, I have no problems with your making a statement to the record. I, I will say this here, I, I have grave concern. I'm gonna support the motion uh, because I do think it's a democratic way of doing things. But I will be honest and tell you, I am not moved right now from the current position. Uh, there was a study done many years ago when we first came onto this board that said the two major impediments to Dade County having economic revitalization was education, our education system, and our transportation system. And we have done a yeoman's job trying to rebuild or, or uh, uh, create a transportation system that works that will invite businesses into this community. We're one of the poorest communities in the country. And if we don't find a way to get industries in here, we will never get out of that state. And I recognize anytime there's an increase on anything, there's always concern. I have those same concerns. But if you run two red lights in this town, it's over 300 bucks. You'll pay more running two, uh, two red lights than creating an infrastructure that will bring industry into this community that will help us move to the next generation. And that's sad, because I never see the outpouring on those kinds of things. But if we don't do something, ladies and gentlemen, you won't have jobs in this community where we can move this community forward. I know every penny hurts. Boy, it crunches me with the kids that I have. It's killing me. But I do recognize that we have to make some sacrifice. You can't even get on a plane now. You get on a plane, it's 25 bucks for every bag you take on the plane. There's a cost associated. And we have to find a way to level this. And I also will urge the, um, the folk who are against the tolls, reach out and get a cross section of this community. Because I'd like to hear from more than just one area of town. Because obviously these tolls affect everybody in Dade County. And right now I have not heard that. I've heard from a select few in a select corridor. That's not to say that their views are not important. You're vitally important. But you guys have to understand the big picture. If we don't move this community forward, you're going to have the same issues you've had with Dade County with the transportation system there because nobody was ever brave enough to put the money on the table incrementally to do things. When you look at the postage stamp, the reason they go up one penny here, two pennies here, is to try to keep you from complaining. But they try to do it incrementally because the costs go up with doing things. When you look at the overall budget, we spend less than 10%, I think it's closer to 5 or 6% on administration. The rest of the money goes into projects. Dade County is probably 60% administration. Most of the cities are probably minimally 50% administration. So your dollars are truly being used in this community with this authority the right way. And I know there's always room for disagreement. I respect it. There are things that I disagree with that others agree with. But I'm asking you, take some time to look at the big picture, and maybe there's some other things that we can kind of roll back and try to figure out how we grow this community the right way. Other than that, we're going to get left behind in the 21st century. We're spending all these millions of dollars to dredge the seaport down to 50 feet, 
to increase industry in this community, industrial. But you know what? If your roads, if your artilleries can't handle it, what's the purpose? You've wasted that money, so all those industries still will not come here. So we have to find a way to get out of this here. And I just ask you to consider, and I had already mentioned, in fact, I was going to mention on the phone last time, Board Member Gutierrez, I had no problem with the 60%, I, I mean the 60 cents. I just kind of wanted to know what was going to come out of the budget. And since I was calling in, I didn't have the benefit of seeing that. I couldn't support your motion then. Uh, and I still have some consideration for 60 as long as we know what we're taking out. But I do have grave concern, and I recognize, and I hate to call you know, uh, vendors on the carpet, but the investment bankers and, and, and some of the other folk, because they have to come back to us sometime to compete, I don't know if sometimes they can be candid. I like people to be candid with me on the record. I've always explained that to people. Whatever the issue is, put it on the table. Let's not sugarcoat it. If you think this is going to hurt our bonds, we've had that situation with the city of Miami where their bonds have eroded to the point nobody trusts them oftentimes when they put bond issuances out. We have to create the faith and credit with people that they're willing to trust us when we do something. And so I want you to take all those things into consideration when we come back because if it's just a move to just to get it to 60% without a true dialogue of where we're going in this community, it's all a waste of time. And it becomes just a show. And I don't think any of the members here are for that. I'm, I'm not trying to call any member out on that. I know there are very sincere people here who uh, want to move this community forward. But I want everybody to understand, it's a tough situation being in this position. You know, and you get badgered when you're trying to do what's right. And I'm sure Mayor McDougal would tell you the same thing. No matter what he does as a mayor, there's somebody in that community who thinks he's horrible. It's the nature of the beast. But what are we going to do to move this community forward? And I, that's, the, our, that's the kind of communication and dialogue I want to have on transportation if we're going to move into the 21st century and be competitive and create a job base and some economic development here. We spend more on a stadium than we would on infrastructure that will employ people and bring industries into this town. So to me, it's a, it's a rough picture. But I will support the motion for purposes of the, uh, democracy. All right, continue the roll call. Yes, sir. Mr. Martinez. Mr. Martinez. Martinez. I'm on the phone. Yes. We're, uh, we're calling the roll. Are you voting? I know. I said yes. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Mr. Right. Pago. Mr. Sanabria. Okay. Uh, again, I'm sorry. I do need to make a statement as Go well. Ahead. Thank you. Uh, uh, what What are you saying about the work? That, that, um, if I may, I just want to yeah, point clarification. If I may, for point of clarification. The existing, and this is more of a process issue. I was going to wait till after the after you decide and give us direction. But from a process standpoint, a work program is built for 70 cents based on action taken by the board last month. The board is instructing us to go out with 60 cents. We know what those impacts are. On 836. On 836, understood. And that's what the analysis that was shown on the $403 million bonding capacity. But from a process standpoint, I still have to deliver a work program to the MPO. And the approval of that has to be in the June uh, MPO meeting. Okay, I, I also have to I also have to commit, and this board has heard this. I have to commit on the partnership, the joint participation agreement with Florida's Turnpike and District Six on the 874 extension. That's not an action I can wait on. Now, either 60 or 70. That would have to be a project that would be a priority. And if it isn't, I need to know because then I have to pull back on that project. The other comment that I would make is that we have a budget workshop coming in at the end of this month. And that budget is developed to support the activities of the agency. Based on this issue, I will have to, sp I will have to pare it down. And then we can amend it at, an, at a later date, but I will have to pare it down. Those are just process issues. And, and in addition, I want to say that I passed out a memorandum to you and obviously, we're, there's no use going into a strategic plan if we don't know exactly where we're headed. So that also will be postponed until uh, the, the decision is made, unless there's further, you know, motions to to cut it further. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd just like to make a short statement out, out of deference to Vice Chair Fano and Ms. Gutierrez, who have been the most vocal about uh, the toll reconsideration. I am voting with them to reconsider this, but I'm not necessarily going to vote for this when it does come back. I want them to have a chance at the public level as well, saying that uh, they didn't have the chance as well 
to again reach their community and come back. But I'll tell you this, I also talk to small business people in, in, the way, in my line of work, and I, can, I know some people who say, point blank, if I can get one more job in before the end of the workday because I was able to commute faster to point A to point B, that's worth for, to me more than the 70 cents or the extra money that I have to pay. So there's a productivity connection to roads. There's time spent on, at work versus time spent on the road. And I think the public needs to see the difference between the 160 cent versus the 70 cents, what it means in loss opportunities of projects and what it could potentially mean in, in commuting time that they could have had should we approve the, uh, should we approve the, uh, the one that was currently in place. Now, the 70 cents versus 60 cents, you're correct if everybody went from one end to the other, but it's per gantry, so that's, that, that we're both right, you're right, and um, so anyway, I will vote yes, but I'm not necessarily voting yes next time around. I need to see exactly how it all lays out, so I'm voting yes, thank you. Continue to vote. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez Pina. I think this is a, a, a function of the public outcry, and I think it's, uh, if anything, the, the victor here is the public, that you have 13 community-minded people that are really struggling with a tough decision and you've heard some great, strong, and, uh, and compelling arguments. So I think uh, I just wanted to point for the record that uh, this is why we're here, to do exactly what we're doing. And uh, in, this, in, in the spirit of democracy and the public disclosure and discussion, I, I support the motion. Continue the roll. OK. <clears throat> uh, first of all, OK. Pretty much uh, for every penny more spent on tolls, okay, means less money spent on gas. It means more money in construction for Miami-Dade County and American workers, American steel, American concrete, for the highways and for the future guideways of transit. Okay, right now, construction costs are at an all-time low, but they're going up. Bond costs are at an all-time low. They're going to go up. We have a batch of projects pending. Okay, this also, our bond costs may also go up in addition because if we break some of the trusts we built with the bondholders. So uh, MDX was created to help get us out of the mess that we're in transportation-wise. Okay, and uh, we need to make the decisions. This is going to delay it. Okay, I understand, you know, getting the community impact, uh, community input, excuse me, and the impact on the community. Okay, the jobs that this would create, there's a lot of them. Okay, and to do it now is a whole lot better than in the future. Okay, at least in my view. Uh, for that being said, um, I'm gonna have to vote against this motion. I know I'm in the minority. Here, and I know it's already passed, I could count the votes. But uh, I think we need to get moving. I've been on this board for, since I helped create it, I've been on it at the beginning, a little gap in the middle. But uh, we've done a few things, widened some roads, did some landscaping, added a little extensions here and there. But the mass of things that need to be done, okay, that are coming up, this may seriously delay a lot of those future projects that are not in this work program, but when the PD&Es are done, should be. And we're gonna have to pay that price in the future. Okay, so you have my vote. All right, so that concludes the, so tell us the result of the vote. Yes or no? Oh, oh I'm sorry. How did you vote, I'm Mr. Foreman? But again, against the measure. Against. Who has it faced? A Vice Chair Fano? Chair Foray? No. Motion passes. Mr. Pago has already voted. He, he voted yes. So to announce what, what the final vote was. Oh, it would be three, three no's and nine yeses. And nine yeses. Three, three no's and nine yeses. So uh, we move forward. Uh, as 
the final item that I have was uh, my, my uh, uh, mayor. Mayor Fred, we, we still have not conducted the shade nice. meeting. We have a court reporter that is waiting nice. on us. Can we have a two-minute break? Uh, well, we'll have a five-minute break, but I want to say that um, with regards to the chair's comments, I think I've already made more than enough. So, right. so uh, Great. <laughs> I will waive that, and you have the memorandum, uh, which five minutes uh, will be three minutes. How many minutes? Five minutes right, uh, break. You. All right, thank you. Uh, Executive Director Javier Rodriguez will be Steve Andruck and Francine Steelman. All right, uh, we're now into. So, so, so Steve Andruck is not going to be there, so it will only be on the record Francine Steelman. So we're now going into session. Those of you that are. Tell me when the court report is ready. Conclusion of attorney-client session. I will now reopen the public meeting. Is that what is that what I have to read into yeah, the record? The board meeting. Yeah, the board the board meeting. meeting. I'm sorry. Yes, okay. I will now reopen the board meeting. Is that right. correct? Mm -hmm. Is that it? That's it. Okay. Now, is there a motion for adjournment? All those in favor of adjournment? Anybody that wants to keep on talking? <laughs> Thank you, Chairman, for No, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me open up my skeptic calendar. <coughs> Yeah, we're adjourned. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I know, I know where do you think you're going? No, I don't think an hour. Half an hour to 45. Okay.